So now that we've seen why stakeholder engagement is important and looked at some of the different ways that you can identify and engage stakeholders, we can move on to discuss this mysterious thing that we call the NMC, or National Mirror Committee. The boxes highlighted here in yellow indicate where the National Mirror Committee is relevant in the process of stakeholder engagement for new work in ISO. But first things first, what is a National Mirror Committee? Put simply, it's just a structure that's established at the national level that brings together all of the different national stakeholders so they can exchange views and discuss the international standardisation work. It's important to note that even though ISO calls it an NMC or National Mirror Committee, it can be known by many different names. For example, the American National Standards Institute, ANSI, calls its National Mirror Committees Technical Advisory Groups or TAGs and Standards New Zealand calls theirs international review groups. So really it doesn't matter what you call it, it's the stakeholder engagement function that's important. And here's a tip for you. If you make the list of members of your National Mirror Committee publicly available, this might trigger interest from other stakeholders to get engaged in the work. For example, if they see that their competitor is part of your National Mirror Committee, they'll want to get involved too. So what is the role of the National Mirror Committee? It's basically to determine the national consensus position based on the input of all of the national stakeholders around the table. Members of the National Mirror Committee are then selected to act as delegates to attend the ISO committee meetings where they will present and defend the national consensus position that is determined within the NMC. So, how does the National Mirror Committee fit into the overall structure of a national standards body? At ISA, we recognise that our member bodies pursue their standardisation work in a number of different areas. Firstly, they have the national work, for which they usually create national technical committees. These bring together the national stakeholders and experts to develop national standards. They may also do regional standardisation work. For example, the European ISO members may take part in SEN committees, and the American countries may work with the Pan American Standards Commission, COPANT. The NSB may also participate in the international standards development of the IEC on electrotechnical standards. And last but not least, it participates in the work of ISO. Now, the National Mirror Committee is the body that feeds the national input into the ISO system. The national stakeholders feed their input into the National Mirror Committee. In some cases, these might be the very same stakeholders that take part in the National Committee. And in fact, if there is already a national committee that works on the same topic as the ISO committee, then the national committee can simply act as the National Mirror Committee. There is no need to have two separate structures. The National Mirror Committee then feeds its input, which is the national consensus position, into the ISO technical committee. And this is where all the different members present their national positions and work towards forming an international consensus, which is then reflected in the international standard. Before you go ahead and set up your National Mirror Committee, however, it is a very good idea to define a clear set of rules and procedures for how the committee will function. These procedures should include things such as how the committee is formed, how decisions within the committee are made, how the committee is funded and what resources are available to it, as well as procedures for appeals and dispute resolution. For the purposes of transparency, these procedures should also be made publicly available, for example, by posting them on the NSB website. The composition of the National Mirror Committee is another very important consideration. Not only should the NSB try to identify all relevant stakeholders, but it must ensure that every National Mirror Committee member has equal participation rights and that all stakeholder categories are represented without any one stakeholder or one category of stakeholders being dominant within the committee. In order to check if the composition of your mirror committee is truly representative, it is a good idea to look back at the different stakeholder categories we saw earlier and ask yourself, is each one represented? And don't forget that you might have to go out and look for more stakeholders. It is not just the stakeholders that declare their own interests that are important. It is also highly recommended 
that national mirror committees maintain records of all of their decisions and that they regularly review the composition of the committee. This is just to make sure to maintain representativeness of all stakeholders and stakeholder categories. And finally, training is an important responsibility of the NSB towards its national mirror committees. For those new to international standardisation, it will be necessary to provide basic training on ISO's standard development practices. For example, the rules of the standard development process that are set out in the ISO directives. And for the leadership of the committee, the chair especially, it would be beneficial to provide training on facilitation and consensus building skills. And don't forget that ISO does provide resources to help NSBs with these sorts of training needs, and you can find more information on ISO's website. Once you've defined the rules and procedures for how the National Mirror Committee will operate, you can go ahead and form the National Mirror Committee. Now, as we mentioned earlier, if there's an existing National Committee working on the same subject, that National Committee can act as the National Mirror Committee. Or perhaps a subset of stakeholders from the National Committee can act as the Mirror Committee if, for example, the ISO work is on a narrower, more specific topic which forms only part of the scope of the National Technical Committee. And if resources are scarce, it is possible to have one National Mirror Committee following the work of several ISO committees working in related subject areas. It's also important to note that stakeholders can still contribute input without actually joining the National Mirror Committee. If stakeholders lack the resources to become members of the committee, the NSB can still collect their comments and make sure they're heard and considered in the Mirror Committee. They can do this, for example, by conducting a national public inquiry ballot. And of course, for any committee to function well, it requires skilled leadership. And therefore, the role played by the National Mirror Committee Chair and Secretary are crucial to its good functioning and success. The main role of the Chair of the Mirror Committee is to make sure that all of the voices are heard. The Chair must remain neutral and lead the diverse group of stakeholders towards consensus. The Chair therefore needs to have very good facilitation skills and dispute resolution skills, as well as technical knowledge of the subject area and an understanding of the ISO process. The Chair is usually chosen from amongst the members of the National Mirror Committee, and is someone who is accepted and respected by the members of the Mirror Committee. As for the Secretary, the Secretary is usually a member of the NSB staff, and his or her main role is to ensure good project management, that is, to make sure that ISO's procedures are followed and that the Mirror Committee works effectively to provide input to the ISO process. To be run effectively, however, a Secretariat does require adequate resources, and if these aren't available within the NSB, a secretariat can be outsourced as long as there is a contractual agreement and monitoring by the NSB.